since we since we have Chris here, can you just run through what was the controversy in episode three? Um, uh, the two two gentlemen, um, u- uvula tickling. Oh, there you go. Can we say that on on YouTube? <laughs> that's well, that's well, controversy. Console, of- console hockey. Console, console hockey. hockey. You could say yeah. that too. Yeah, I, I think uvula tick- tickling is more creative. That works. But usually that that's where you cause the gag reflex though. Is that what you're suggesting? That's what I was going to say like tonsil hockey I know is kissing. Like the other one you don't know what is causing that. Um well you need good reach. So the oh, depends. <laughs> is that do you you want my quick thoughts? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Very quick thoughts, yeah. You know what? To tell you the truth I enjoyed the the episode. My my uh, only comment is is that if this is a one-off vignette then i don't know what the point of it was uh, except for some stunting uh if but if this is a, a way to bring outside stories one-offs in uh that demonstrate the effect of the plague on different people all over the world then i'm all in i, I you know it's kind of a plaza suite technique where uh you know you you go off and show two people in another room do you know having their own lives being affected in their own ways and that i don't mind at all so i just have to wait and see if this was a one off or um or will now you know using vignettes to show an expanded universe which i'm all for well i i saw the mm-hmm. half of the first half of the episode it seemed like padding to me yeah yeah like i padding I agree. And like, well we need 10 episodes or however I don't know how many episodes the first season is, but um, it, it seemed like padding because as you pointed out, Paul, what's the point? We visit these characters. A story is told. This is how the, this is how this uh, uh, cataclysm has affected people. So, but what's the point? These characters aren't going to return. Are they going to pay off? Um, I mean, I do like the character that was an episode, I believe it was uh, the last episode previous to this where they you meet the scientist and she kind of sets up you you got to just like bomb the cities that's the only way to stop yeah that's that's the other thing they didn't do in this episode in opening um sort of time machine thingy Uh Uh, the the ending of this episode the suicide note is super important Mm -hmm. and wonder and quite powerful uh so like i said um if it's a way to fill out 10 shows and they got a couple more in between vignettes i don't i don't mind like let's because let's be honest like look this is pedro pascal doing the same it's the same role as the mandalorian well i have to escort this child sure thing and once that mission is complete what is the show so um i mean so first of all by the way i'm enjoying the last of us i think it's great i think it should i think it should be a limited series that tells one story and mm. maybe that story diverts from the video game because the second video game pissed a lot of people off. Um, and I'm not going to get into it. Uh, I I'm only, I'm actually just started playing the first, the first game and I, I quite enjoy it. So I see why people like it, but also you set this up and there's a goal. Either you complete the goal or you don't. And then upon completion of the goal, you're done. They're not going to drag this out like lost for eight seasons or however long that went like it, it'll be really dissatisfying so i think i think a lot of this they just have to focus on making this uh you know telling that one story and if there's more to tell sure but i don't think that there is i think that there's well, there's one goal in mind once they get yeah, to that and, goal, and, a, and a video headline. game video game works when it has a simplistic goal whereas yes. you can't do that in a tv series you have to expand the universe and i i really exactly. enjoyed i really enjoyed this uh episode uh you know i i didn't have any i didn't have any issues with it uh, maybe I, these I, characters will be more important later on when they uh, try to well, maybe it's the flashbacks Earth. maybe it's flashbacks. and uh they they need to figure out how to get gay men to actually re- help repopulate or something i don't know <laughs> that's the only Again. way i can think of you know, being gay, playing into the apocalypse. Sorry, guys. I'm just saying. Part, part of the part of the problem is that our minds have been so poisoned by all this woke shit that we think there's an agenda around every corner. And I'm trying to prevent myself from falling into that trap. 
and just enjoying something for the sake of it. I've already read comments from people who are so anti-woke that right. it's the opposite of woke. And, and now you can't enjoy anything that I'm trying to really not fall into. So, yeah, I'm, of course, mostly joking, but like, obviously, like I have not watched the show. I'm just the commenting, show, I'm just the commenting game, so. for that. I mean, that's a legitimate comment, but we are talking about the show. And, and you know, as a TV network executive, stunting is a completely legitimate thing. You know, oh, no, uh, uh, Kirk, uh, evil brother with the goatee is in this episode. I mean, you know, that's, yeah. it, it's part of TV. So, oh, yeah, we've had the discussion before about, you know, jumping, you know, shadows and, and worrying to, you know. So I like the characters. Too hardcore was, uh, and some things. It was a yeah. wonderful ending. But like I said, if we get one more self-contained vignette then i'll go okay this made perfect sense because the road trip is gonna get boring really quickly yes they're walking you know they're, <laughs> they're, they're walking uh how, how does this get in and they have to get to a specific place right which you know, i know there is a you know there's an end game to this so i think how long are they going to drag out getting to the place it will episode will the final episode of this season have a a cliffhanger i don't know so um you know I, I you know look i've enjoyed it my expectations were very low but you're right paul i think the people have an instant knee-jerk reaction to anything that could be perceived as being woke when this kind of content you know existed way before there were those sensitivities in place do you see i really see that a lot where like Something, you know, there'll be characters or some situation or something that could be considered, you know, some, you know, diverse. Some, yeah, so it's like diverse and it's like, well, but and it's like, but there was diversity previous to people using that word nonstop. You know, yeah. that's what's actually really, I think the annoying thing is the way these things are, are promoted and portrayed. And when you see, you know, like uh, like this whole Zachary Levi situation. I didn't even realize. I had to look it up. I'm like, why do they hate him? Yeah. We'll, we'll get in. We'll get into Zachary Levi in a moment because that's yeah. one of the main topics. I and mean, just to get us there to round this off, I just want to point out that yeah, you're right. People are now hypersensitive to, yes. to anything that can be misunderstood as woke like oh there's a gay character on screen woke like oh there's a black character on screen woke no that's not true at all no it's I the mean, forced it's part woke. yeah it's not woke until uh, until it's fundamental to the narrative when the narrative is basically fundamentally racist in nature and the narrative is separating people when the narrative is doing segregation and dividing people assigning value to them that's what everything woke is that's kind of like the defining trait of it if that's not there then i would say it's not really woke however that people see wokeness wherever they go and get so defensive to it. That's not the fault of anyone. That's something that we have to like try to keep ourselves in check about doing, which shouldn't be necessary, but that everyone, that so many do it. That is the fault of Hollywood, who has been pushing their agenda so far. Yeah. People are pushing back. Correct. Yes. yes. And, like and, 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 and that's, yeah. Well, it's like Paul said, it's like, then it becomes sort of the opposite of it, right? It's like people who see, there are types of people who see racism everywhere, where there is no racism. Like traffic lights are racist. You know, you could literally, yeah. I guarantee you could Google anything and blank is racist. You would find- My favorite is math. Example. Yeah, math is racist. Like, but then it's like, you know, this is woke just because there are characters that are gay or there uh, is a mixed race couple or like, Things that are the, you know, th that's maybe a sign, but it's, that doesn't mean that it is that, you know, it's like, it's about it being kind of forced or it's like that becomes the defining thing, like Paul was talking yeah. about. So um, there is a danger to that where you just see it, you know, but, but the, the seeing racism and everything has just become like, God, you just, you groan at the stupidity of the people who think this way, but you can't go the opposite direction. Uh, but you have to you have to put the blame at the feet of people like Ibrahim Kendi who pushed this anti-racism right. stuff, and and now we're pushing back. 
I'm the and, institutions right. that put it there. Let's be clear, let's be clear. Ibrahim Xkendi, that's just like one of the uh, one of the foot soldiers. Oh yeah. But there's, uh, but there's other that were uh, well, the, the, as the I've two. pointed out before. Yeah, I mean, whole thing a, a, a guilty, just... here in Toronto, a guilty white law firm, one of the biggest, is paying them twenty five thousand dollars to tell all of them that they're racist and they'll be racist for the rest of their lives. That law firm, that's the problem. That's yeah, I mean, the it's, real it's, issue right there. Is that and, law so, firm and all other firms like it? Yeah, we and and this is their virtue signaling, and you sort of combine all that and what Hollywood is doing, and stuff like uh, people demanding that Joan of Arc was actually a trans woman, and you go, oh, your brain is exploding, and then you see a show like this, and you go, I can't, I can't deal with it, and you just have to calm down and go, think a bit of it in its own terms, and it's getting harder and yeah. harder. <clears throat> yes. And I I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I can't be as forgiving, but I understand where you're coming from. Um, you know, I, I'm insulted by the insertion of agenda in programming now, whether it be, you know, uh, entertainment ventures or possibly even news. It's, 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 it's shading the opinions of a lot of things, you know, including some things that are going to have direct repercussions in our lives, such as AI and things like that. But, mm -hmm. um, and there's there this is that we we we're well beyond a slippery slope as you were describing and Andre was reacting to this this law firm but i just it, it, this is this kind of entertainment is is we still have to continue to call out for what it is and again i'm not I, i'm not going to try to yuck anybody's yum but i just it, there's 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 look I, I'm all about, and I, I've said it before, I don't want to see ghosts in everything that I watch, right? I don't go looking for ghosts in programming. But when I see things that are clearly agenda narratively driven, I'm going to call it out. And this this show, I told everybody from episode three onward, based on what I was told and some clips I had seen, this is playing out exactly as I expected. So it's, I mean, it, 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 yeah. it, it diverges wildly from the story in the game in this episode. Yeah. Those are well, my I mean, again, like there's there's a difference. We've had this conversation numerous times. You know, I love when Paul does his classic uh, TV guide episodes because those show time and time again how Hollywood has tried to do these things in the past and whether it worked or not. But them acting like this is the first time they've done it is just bull crap. And that's the virtue signaling aspect of it. Then there's the, right. the forced aspect of it. And Star Trek Discovery is probably one of the better examples of what is woke, right? Because you have oh, yeah. you have a scene where you literally get stopped in the middle of the scene for somebody to go, I would prefer if you used my pronouns. It's like, okay, we'd be so far past this shit Correct. at that point. We'd like, be using that, adverbs in the future. Well, not only that, I think Robert Meyer Burnett has pointed out like there's- That so was a joke, Tom. I needed a laugh. I know. You didn't <laughs> give like, me a laugh. <laughs> well, here you go. Get up! Well, that's you. another stupidity part of uh, Star future, Trek Discovery. In the future, no more pronouns. He'll be using adverbs. I want to know what happens to that guy when, you know, the ship goes sideways. Because, <laughs> you know, even though they would have, like, uh, you know, levitating wheelchairs by this point, if there was a medical reason for this guy to actually still be stuck in a real chair, like, that's just one of the many stupid things that, that woke shit adds to the table here, right? You know, the, the the one that I always found that was the funniest is when Andre will bring up, uh, what was it, the, the Chernobyl show? Yes. People were freaking out about. That was hilarious. Yeah, there's uh, not enough of, um, people of yeah. color in Chernobyl. Yeah, no, because uh, the <laughs> oh. protest was like, there's no, why were there no black people? It's like black, like you make it as if there were no black people in Chernobyl. And the answer, of course, is that there weren't. There weren't, no. <laughs> They're trying to be accurate to history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've I've said it before. Every time Greg Morris from Mission Impossible went behind the fake Iron Curtain country dressed up in whatever uniform that they picked for it, my dad, <laughs> Hungarian father, was just howling with laughter. <laughs> we never saw a black person behind in Hungary ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's like, you know, with Star Wars, like everybody went after George for the original Star Wars, not the, the prequels, mind you, the original one. They're like, no, no black people are in this movie. He's like, huh, you're right. And he didn't, he didn't do it on purpose. It was just a fact of he where he shot the film just happened to not be a lot of black people. 
Well, and it's, well they also like true. blamed him and trying to say that all the only British people were the bad guys. It's like, well, Alec Guinness also spoke with a British accent, but again, that's just because they shot in England. That's all they had to use was English not, accent. Not just, that, not just that. Originally, George Lucas wanted to get Toshiro Mifune to play Obi Wan yes. Kenobi. Yeah, because he really wow. wanted like someone who'd been in samurai movies. That was one of the people he wanted, but the studio did not want to cast in that role. Oh, and you're so, kidding! Also, you're right. Oh, that yeah. would have been I insane. I think they were also pressuring for uh, a name, right? So they wanted somebody right, who's right. established. Yeah. Well, a name that which was, he was, uh, but like, yeah, yeah, like you know, somebody who was like, yeah, film big nerds. Toshiro oh, oh. was only known to film nerds, really. But that would have been cool. You're right. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Oh, like that would have yeah. been insane yeah oh i think he almost played mr miyagi too if i remember our reporting right anyways yeah the studio was really mad when they killed off um uh, uh obi-wan well you just killed off the one star you had in the in the freaking movie <laughs> i think uh, uh alec guinness was more upset about that than anybody was he uh, yeah that was Marsha Lucas's suggestion. Yeah, it was her idea to do that because he's like, he's not doing anything. We've, we've gone <laughs> yeah. off track here. Let's get back on track. Yes, All we right, have. Sorry. Let's get back on yes. track. No, no.